three, two. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and welcome once again to our weekly media briefing and public health update with Montgomery County Executive Mark Elridge. I'm Lorna Virgilli, Hispanic Public Information Officer, and joining us today is Dr. James Bridgers, Director of the Department of Health and Human Services, as well as Mr. Sean O'Donnell, Acting Deputy Assistant Chief Public Health Services. They're both here to answer questions in case you might have any questions regarding public health. Also joining us today, we have two special guests from the Alcohol Beverage Services Department in the county, Jocelyn Rawick, who is a communications manager, as well as Amy Saman, who is ABS Division Chief for Licensure, Regulation, and Education. Members of the media, we are recording this meeting. And uh, with that, Mr. County Executive, good afternoon from Mako, I believe. Yes, here I am in Mako, in uh, Cambridge, Maryland right now. Uh, so thanks for joining us again this week. I want to begin by acknowledging the new leadership um, at the County Council. Um, Andrew Friedson will be the new council president for this year, and vice president will be Kate Stewart. It's been one year since this historic council with six female members um, was sworn into office, and it's the first time in county's history that our legislative branch is governed by a female majority. Over the past year, we've worked together to increase education spending to record levels, continue our effort to combat climate change and expand affordable housing options for Montgomery County residents, and enact significant legislation, including the rent stabilization bill. I want to thank outgoing President Evan Glass for his work over the last year and his leadership on the Safe Streets Act and the creation of the Anti-Hate Task Force. Uh, last week, I attended the meeting of this task force, the last meeting of the task force, and I was very impressed by the presentations, though the conversation was pretty disheartening. Um, giving the incidents around the world and what many people in this group are experiencing because there are a lot of people with ties um, to some of these high conflict areas. Uh, we're dealing with the rise in anti-Semitic, Islamophobic, homophobic and racist hate incidents, both locally and nationally. And MCPD has 54 police reports tied to prejudice in October, 60 in November. That's more than a 300% increase compared to the same time last year. And this is concerning, especially since we know more is happening than what's reported. And, you know, we're also seeing this in schools. It's not like this is appearing on the walls of buildings and places like that. But, you know, these kind of incidents are occurring in schools as well. Um, it's very unfortunate. It, it does not help create or foster a healthy environment. And uh, we would hope that people would focus on what we do to live together peacefully rather than incite people to hate. Um, that has not had a very productive history um, as a practice. Uh, we remain committed to being a safe and inclusive community for everyone. And the way to combat hate is to work together and push back against it. Uh, we also have the Committee Against Hate Violence within our county's Office of Human Rights, and they're hosting a seminar tonight. The program is going to focus on how a member of the public can file a federal civil rights hate bias violence a case, and it'll also provide educational information aimed at preventing and handling and mediating incidents of hate bias or violence. The program is going to be held at 6.30. It's in person. Um, as well as being stream, streamed on cable TV Montgomery and Facebook. I want to remind everyone of the importance of reporting hate or bias incidents. Call 911 in an emergency or call 301-279-8000 for non-emergencies. There's also a hate crimes hotline, 1-800-637-6247. That's, that's available between 8.30 in the morning and 5 p.m. on weekdays. Our police do respond. Our police are not ignoring these incidents. They investigate them and we are looking for perpetrators. So any information you can provide about people you think may be engaged in these activities, we will take it seriously and we will act on it. Uh, we've allocated funding for security grants to help groups and community organizations protect themselves. The request for help has risen each year. And this year we moved $300,000 forward in the funding cycle so that we could quickly address the immediate needs. And we worked with the County Council to increase the amount available. 
With the war and bloodshed in Israel and Gaza, the tensions have increased here at home. And while I urge everyone here to continue to engage peacefully, we also want to help those who are harassed and attacked. Uh, they need our support during these difficult times. I share the sadness of many that the ceasefire was ended um, and, and that the resumption and fighting is once again taking a high toll of civilians. It is somewhat heartening that more and more people, particularly in political leadership, are calling out the civilian toll and making an issue out of how many civilians are being harmed in this process. Um, and I think it's important. This is not something we can just stand by and watch. It makes me incredibly uncomfortable. It is one thing to pursue the terrorists and I have no problem with doing that. Um, but one has to actually be careful about what the collateral damage is. And we just have a lot of collateral damage right now. Uh, this week is return of alcohol beverage services special liquor lottery. Registration is now open for an opportunity to purchase the highly sought after liquors. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but there are brands of liquors which fetch a, fetch a very high price around Montgomery County. They're sold uh, well above the actual uh, of manufacturer's listed retail price. But in Montgomery County, we sell the bottles at the manufacturer's suggested retail price, which is much lower than the price charged by most retailers outside the county. This lottery is for residents who are 21 or older, and you must register by December 9th. You can do that by visiting MontgomeryCountyMD.gov, ABS Lottery. Winners will be selected and announced on December 19th. A separate lobby for alcohol license holders, which are generally restaurants, will be held at the same time. There are over 400 bottles total available. This is a bonus lottery. We had one in the spring of the year and over a thousand bottles were sold. Um, I actually went to this and I was amazed how far people traveled. I mean, not far in Montgomery County, but far outside Montgomery County, people traveled uh, to get an opportunity to buy these bottles. We use the lottery system to offer fair pricing and equitable access as much as possible with such a limited supply. The lottery also gives Montgomery County businesses the chance to carry rare spirits for their customers. While this promotion creates a lot of excitement, it is only part of the ABS story. The department generates profits for the county that can be used for various projects, and it also makes us a safer county with better control over alcohol sales. Uh, the money ABS generates, $35 million in net income, is money that if we didn't have it, we'd have to replace with almost two additional cents on the tax rate. So this is not only uh, an effort to keep alcohol more affordable and more safe, but it also is an effort to use the revenues to offset some of the other costs we have in the county. I'd like to invite two guests to help explain our lottery and efforts to help ensure we keep drunk drivers off the road this holiday season. Jocelyn Rawat will talk about the lottery and Amy Salmon will discuss a public safety initiative that ABS is once again participating in again this year. So Jocelyn and Amy, the show is yours for the moment. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thanks for inviting us to speak today from Alcohol Beverage Services. I'm Amy Saman, and I am with um, the Division of Licensure Regulation and Education. I'm going to speak briefly about our uh, exciting holiday coaster campaign, which we launched at the beginning of November of this year. This is the second year for the coaster campaign. The coaster is designed to provide a list of alternative rides uh, to prevent intoxicated driving during the holidays. Although it's always best for folks to plan um, a ride home beforehand, this gives everyone a backup plan in case something someone drinks a little bit too much. The coasters are available in both English and Spanish. They have a QR code that takes patrons to the website that lists alternative rides. The alternative rides include a list of taxi cabs, links to Uber and Lyft, links to Ride On and Metro, and a link to the Washington Regional Alcohol Program's Sober Ride, which is providing a $15 credit during the holiday season. The coasters are free of charge and they're distributed by ABS's licensure regulation and education staff. They are paid for by an educational grant from the National Alcohol Beverage Control Association. 
And any businesses that are interested in, in getting more coasters or have not received any coasters and would like to can contact our offices at any time through our communication center. It's 240-777-1900. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aman. Jocelyn, do you have any uh, remarks? I do. Um, <laughs> um, so thanks for having me. My name is Jocelyn Rawat, and I am uh, the communications manager here at Alcohol Beverage Services. And I am very excited to get to talk about the whiskey lotteries um, because this is one of the most popular programs that we have here at ABS. Uh, passion for whiskey runs really high and there's a lot of demand um, for rare, high-end and hard to find products. Um, and here at ABS, we're committed to making sure that access to these premium products is as fair and transparent as possible. Um, so one way that we do that is through the whiskey lotteries. So essentially, you register to win the opportunity to buy a bottle at the manufacturer's suggested retail price. So the lotteries are a huge benefit to Montgomery County residents, um, not only because the products are highly allocated and therefore hard to find, um, but also because ABS sells them um, at the manufacturer's suggested retail price. So if you were uh, to try to purchase these products at a private retailer outside of Montgomery County, you would likely end up paying um, a huge markup. Um, and that's if you can find the products at all. Um, so normally we run the lottery uh, once a year. Um, and the last one that we did was in February and, uh, and March of 2023. So less than a year ago. Um, and and that, was, uh, that was across three lotteries, one for Maryland residents, one for Montgomery County residents, and one for licensees. Uh, but 2023, lucky for us, has turned out to be a really good year for allocated products. And we're very excited um, that we're able to offer this bonus lottery. Um, and it's going to be for Montgomery County residents and licensees only. So we, uh, we will include in the lottery, or we are including in the lottery, 400 bottles, including the very highly coveted Happy Van Winkle 23 year. Um, and that's in addition to several other um, really premium products. So if you want the chance to win, you register now through Saturday at midnight on our website at www.montgomerycountymd.gov slash ABS slash lottery. Um, entry is free, uh, but there are some rules. You must be 21 to enter one entry per person, and your entry must exactly match your name and address as it appears on your driver's license. Um, so the winners will be announced on, uh, on December 19th and product pickup will be January 8th to 28th. So one of the questions that we, got, we get a lot is um, how good are my chances of winning? Um, and that's gonna depend on how many people enter the lottery, but I can tell you that in the February, March lottery, more than 18,000 people um, entered to win the 1,000 uh, bottles. So there, there you go. Good luck if you plan to enter. And if you win, also please remember um, to consume responsibly. Thank you, Ms. Rod, as well as Ms. Saman. Members of the media, we can open it up right now uh, for questions regarding ABS, Alcohol Beverage Services. Any questions, please raise your hand. Any questions for our ABS staff? Going once, going twice? No questions. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, ladies. And uh, you can remain on this event or you can drop off if you have to go, Mr. County Executive. So thank you too for joining us today. I really appreciated that. And, and just so you know, everybody is consoled, even if you don't get these bottles of, of bourbon, there are actually some really good bourbons in, in our county stores every day um, that do cost substantially less, but are also pretty excellent bourbons and whiskeys. So uh, do not despair. Your chance at a good bottle of whiskey or bourbon is not lost if you don't win the lottery. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the homeless issue in Montgomery County because we're seeing a homelessness increase and we're concerned over frigid and inclement weather and the effect it has on people who, you know, are forced to spend the night outside which is something we have tried to avoid. Uh, no one's more impacted by winter conditions than those in the county who don't have stable housing or living in these conditions. And that's why I've made sure that Montgomery County has expanded our services to house 
and shelter those experiencing homelessness. I don't know if everybody remembers, but you know, it was only a couple of years ago that uh, during COVID, we had you know brought our homeless folks into our rec centers. And as it looked like COVID was winding down, uh, we were gonna have to put those people back on the street. And I made a decision and the council supported it that we would actually build the shelter that at the time um, would have absorbed most of that population that was going to be put back out on the street. Um, that population has grown, so it leaves us short once again in terms of uh, adequate housing facilities to keep people warm and safe during the winter months, but it really should be warm and safe or safe in general any month. So we're looking at what we can do moving forward on this. Uh, we're going to work with the individuals who experience this homelessness through a comprehensive street outreach effort. That, that aims to restore dignity and partners with individuals to help them achieve their housing and their life goals. And we identify, engage, and assess individuals in need and connect them to services that we provide. And our goal is to provide housing to all of those who need it. We encourage residents to contact the 24-Hour Homeless Information Line at 240-907-2688 if they see someone trying to live and freezing temperatures. If you see somebody huddled in the corner of the building or in a bus shelter or something like that um, during this period, during any period, but particularly during this period, please call the information line. Our outreach specialists will be there to help. And then you can also email to outreach at montgomerycountymd.gov. And that can trigger also a call for uh, help request. And we can recommend that any resident should call 911 if they see someone who appears to be in immediate danger. But to end homelessness in Montgomery County, more affordable housing options are going to need to be provided. I'm proud to have invested record funding toward the creation of affordable housing over the first five years that I've been executive, and I expect to propose more record investment in next year's budget as well. Though we have a lot of work to do, we're seeing some success, and we're actually um, are working with more partners than even ever before. So it's, I'm very encouraged about where we're going with our housing efforts. Over the past 18 months, we've produced or preserved about 1,800 affordable units. And we've seen seven more projects that will be completed by the end of 23, uh, producing more than 500 additional affordable housing units. Just in the last few weeks, we celebrated two developments. We broke ground on the redevelopment of Park Montgomery. This is a 15-story building on Silver Spring. It's near Piney Branch and uh, University Boulevard, built in 71. Um, the existing 141 units are getting renovated, and a new building with 76 more units and a garage underneath it is going to be added to the site. All of the 217 units will serve families earning between 30 and 60% of area median income. For lay people, um, if you're using county standards, that's between 35 and 65 or so thousand uh, dollars. The numbers are a little bit higher if you use the regional standard. Uh, Montgomery County has also facilitated $10.6 million in financing, along with the reduction of uh, local taxes for the project through a pilot. The pilot is an acronym for payment in lieu of taxes, in case you're wondering. Uh, total costs on the project are going to wind up being about $98.8 million, and around a third of the renovated units will be three-bedroom apartments, and three-bedroom apartments are really rare, and they're apartments you need to have when you've got a family that has three or four children. In a few years, these apartments are actually going to be a quarter mile from a Purple Line station that is slowly under construction at the present time. Um, and last week, I attended the groundbreaking of the Sligo Apartments, and it's a 98-unit affordable rental community in Silver Spring on Sligo Avenue. All the apartments at this location will also be affordable. New constructions, mixed income, and mixed use, and provide a modern, high-quality apartment community dedicated to providing quality, affordable housing. We, we often hear the phrase, home for the holidays. This time of year, we must remember that and consider those who don't have stable housing and don't have a home that they can go back to for the holidays. So our job is to do what we can do to provide as many homes as possible. I want to highlight some good and big news that was reported this week. It involves the expansion of one of Montgomery County's largest life science companies, AstraZeneca, 
has plans to leave space at a new building away from its main campus in Gaithersburg, which already is home to 4,300 employees. The company says the move fits with their growth plan, and we're going to wait until they announce the details for the new facility, which they haven't done yet. It's great news for our community, no matter when they announce it. Um, over the last few years, uh, we've worked hard to foster the right environment to help grow our sciences industry significantly. And this is another example of that. Our region ranks number three now in the nation as a life sciences hub and for life sciences research talent. We are home to more than 300 companies, 40,000 biotech workers. Life sciences development is doing well and will be helped by the creation of the Institute for Health Computing near the North Bethesda Metro Station. And uh, they will be moving into temporary space until a permanent building is built on Executive Boulevard. Um, Last week, I received a letter with concerns from county business leaders about the county's office vacancy rate and the loss of tax revenue due to the declining assessments of these buildings. Uh, this is a problem and that is happening around the region and across the country. Everybody's uh, vacancy rates are spiraling. It makes the news on a weekly basis now as more people work from home, the need for office space declines. It's not the first time this happened in the county. It actually occurred during the 90s once before. So we faced this problem in the past as well. We've been aware of this, and that's why our permitting department has helped the conversion process. So we're already doing this. We will continue to work to facilitate these conversions and welcome suggestions on how to work out whatever wrinkles there are. And the process should be as simple and straightforward as possible. We have already done multiple conversions of office space to lab space. And they've been successful and it's, you know, we're really happy to see that. And we've done conversion work from office space into um, rental, into a uh, housing space. And we're encouraged, uh, we're gonna continue to work on this. It's definitely unlikely that office works can be at the same level that existed prior to the pandemic. And the built environment has to adapt. And if we're going to make it work and not be sitting here with, you know, empty office buildings for a long period of time, we're going to need to be able to use, reuse some of this space. And obviously, environmentally, it's better to reuse the spaces than knock everything down and start over again. So we're happy to work with building owners and others on solutions. <clears throat> the good aspects of this are that conversions to housing will occur most likely in the urban cores, which are closest to transportation and jobs. And that the empty space that's coming online at the same time as our growing life sciences industries are looking for more space. So since we've already seen conversions from office to offices, hopefully we'll see more of that. And we're certainly open to that. So I guess you'd say on the bright side, this is an opportunity to turn some lemons into lemonade. Uh, finally, on the health update for the week, as I promised last week, not going to do an extended COVID-19 briefing as long as it's relatively under control. Um, we have seen there's a rise in COVID-19 cases as well as Morris, RSV, and flu across Maryland. But we are far below the levels we were seeing last year at this time. People who are vulnerable, particularly those with compromised immune systems, need to take precautions. And remember that flu and RSV vaccines are available now. As more and more of us are spending more time indoors, please consider getting your flu and COVID-19 vaccines, as well as your RSV vaccine, and help protect the ones you love. Be careful and do what you can to stay safe. Having said all that, I want to give my team a chance to comment if they have anything else to say on the health. And after that, we'll take questions from the media. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. I don't have any additional comments coming from the uh, director's office, um, you stated that we're still in respiratory illness season and folks should take the necessary precautions. I will toss it over to Mr. O'Donnell if he wants to add to that, uh, since he really manages all the data and the metrics and all the great work we do in public health services. Thank you, Dr. Bridgers. I, just just to add that we have yet to, to see the influenza season really increase that has historically occurred during December, it occurred earlier last year. Um, but it's not too late to get your flu shot if you haven't gotten it. It's not too late to get your COVID shot if you haven't gotten it. Please pr protect yourself from the most serious illness um, by getting those, particularly our seniors and those with uh, underlying conditions. 
Thank you, Mr. O'Donnells and Dr. Bridges and Mr. County Executive. Uh, members of the media, we're going to open it up right now for public health and any other topic questions. So raise your hand and uh, let us know if you have questions. Any questions? No questions today, going once, twice. Okay, I guess uh, we don't have any questions today. Thank you for joining us, uh, everybody. Stay safe and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. You can go back to uh, the conference. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.